Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm Stacey Kennedy. And I'm Will Burnick. Keith Halpern is in New York at this time, so I'm taking his place for today. And to start out with today's show, as usual, uh, Will, can you explain what your shirt is? Glad to. This this week I'm wearing a Houston, Texas shirt. Uh, it was it's from Houston, Texas. It was given to me by my cousin Alex, who is who's from Houston, and it rep and it represents the new soccer team that's coming into Houston. Wonderful. It's great to hear. Thank you, Will. So today we um, our guests are Lynn Eldred and Colin Eldred Cohen. And Will, would you like to take it from there and ask the questions? Glad to. Lynn, tell us about the Autistic Creatives Collective. What is it? What stage is it at? The Autistic Creatives Collective is a special project of Ascend, um, which, is, which is an organization in the Bay Area that um, works with people on the um, Asperger's Autistic Spectrum. And there was a, a meeting in February where the special topic was people who are on the spectrum who have are creative and talking about the challenges they face and also talking about the special gifts that people have um, on the spectrum in the creative field. So I think just as background, uh, my son Colin is um, on the spectrum and he's, he has Asperger's and he's extremely creative. Um, his special skills are writing. Um, he's also done some video work. He's done some acting, a little singing, a little dancing. Um, he went to a creative performing arts school and really thrived there. I think as a parent of someone on the spectrum, unfortunately, there's a stereotype that people on the spectrum are more like, oh, I don't know, it, the, the guys in the Big Bang Theory, you know? <laughs> they're all s about science or they're about computers and things like that. And there's so much diversity in the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I found when I went to the meeting in February that there was just kind of a hunger to talk about it. And a large number of people showed up, I think nearly 60 people, to talk about their experience, to talk about their creative talents, things like that. And it was so powerful, um, especially at the break time in the meeting where people started networking and exchanging phone numbers and things, and really a hunger to find each other. So out of that meeting came the idea, um, really the will of people who were attending to start a special project to um, see what could be done to help people who are on this spectrum who are very creative and are really seeking to be able to express themselves and find outlets for their creative talents. Oh, how did you become involved in the autism co community? Well, um, as the mother of someone on the spectrum and um, you know, Colin was kind of on the uh, the, the front end of people coming into the school districts and things like that who were on the spectrum. So every time Colin went into a new grade, we had to teach the teacher. Every time he went into a new school, we had to educate the school that people with Asperger's are really, can be br brilliant, gifted people mm -hmm. and have unique learning challenges and unique challenges in the classroom so that they could really assist him with blossoming and really be being, being able to develop his talents yeah, and his abilities. Thank yes. you very much. So I think it's, uh, it's been, you know, I think Colin was diagnosed just before the age of three, so mm -hmm. he's now 28. <laughs> um, so I've been involved for a long time. Um, I think what's really exciting about the Creatives Collective is we've uh, done um, an online survey, reaching out to people um, in the community who are creative and finding out more about them mm -hmm. and uh, 
just, you know, some wonderful things about their talents. Like, just a huge diversity of talents that were out there. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing we found out in the survey, a couple other things, is that there's really not very many people making a living through their gifts. Um, but there's a desire to do so, mm -hmm. really a desire. And unfortunately, there's also a, 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 an element in the community who are really very quiet and, and maybe a little nervous or, or not confident in their abilities. So they kind of keep their talents to themselves, maybe just share with family and maybe share with nobody. Mm -hmm. And but I think there's a hunger for them to be able to get their work out. Yeah. And um, some of the comments people made were really beautiful about expressing that. Yeah, if I, if I may say so, before you ask any other questions, I, you know, I think after they meet someone like you, that they'll probably open up more about their talents and be more confident. And I just think that that's great. And, you know, that really makes me emotional, so thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I. You know, I, I think just to look at the talent that's out there and be able to find a way to get it out there. Yes. Um, I think there are huge missed opportunities in the employment world mm -hmm. and also really in, you know, the creative world mm -hmm. uh, where there, there's this wealth of talent yeah. that, that people aren't tapping into. So yeah. I think I'm just one of the people of trying to find a way to make that happen. Right. Um, and I suppose despite the jobs maybe they have at the moment, they still mm -hmm. have time, they can still, you know, focus on their creativity and eventually, you know, make a living at it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that would be wonderful. And I yeah. think I, some people just, they might not want to make a living at it because that's a tough way to go. That's is. a tough way to yeah. make a living. But they... You know, if you're so creative, you want to share it. You want to see your work sure. out there. I mean, it doesn't have to be the only th like thing mm -hmm. you do. I mean, there's other ways people are, like, what is it, versatile? Mm -hmm. That um, where also there's always room for what they are best at mm -hmm. as well. So that that's it, it's it's nice that um, eventually that somebody can put their talent and their efforts, you know, out in the world so they're known of and heard mm -hmm. and I think it's wonderful to see the networking opportunities also yeah. that can come out all right hey sure what type of creative activities do people on the autism spectrum get involved in well I think from the survey we learned that uh, a lot of people are in the graphic arts they're painters um, they're mm -hmm. photographers uh, we have people who are writers musicians, people who do graphic arts, people who do crafts, art, you know, crafts. They make things with their hands. Um, uh, just all sorts of outlets. I think there were more than a dozen types of talents that people listed that they have. People in the performing arts, um, uh, which is, you know, such a wonderful way to express yourself, get yourself out there. So I just think there's no limit um, and that if people open their minds and think about how people who are, um, who think in a different way and what they have to bring to all these creative fields, uh, I think it'd be really powerful. Mm -hmm. How would you like to see the collective grow? Well, we got some wonderful suggestions from people on the spectrum who answered the survey about what would they see as helpful to them? Mm -hmm. um, and I think there were uh, a number of key ideas. One of them was ways to get their work um, out there, be it a special gallery show, be it a booth at a, at a, at a convention, things like that, um, be it on a website. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, I think they wanted to find other people and build a network and be able to support each other. And you know, just, it's a great way to meet new friends and people who share your interests that you might not have met otherwise. Yeah. And helping, having people help them and guide them through how to get their work produced, 
how to be able to sell things online, perhaps. I mean, I think there's a variety depending on people's skills, but I think, the, to me, the powerful message mm -hmm. is to the employers, to people in art galleries, to people in music, theater, television, movies, that there's a, a wealth of creative talent out there mm -hmm. who think and approach things differently. And that can really, it, I mean, that's what art is all about. Yes, exactly. Is really looking at things and, you know, how do you look things at things differently? Thank you, Lynn, so much. That was very informative, and I look forward to a discussion later on it, too. And now we turn to Colin Eldred Cohen. Um, Will, you take it from here? Glad to. Colin, tell us about your website. Ah, my website, Fish and Cherries Productions, or fishandcherries.com. Um, that is a pet project of mine. I'm hoping to blossom it into an actual production studio where I and hopefully other people can produce creative works and release them to the general public on the internet. At the moment, though, because I'm short on funds mm -hmm. and, you know, very early on, it's... Uh, it's kind of a host for my writings, particularly my review work. I do uh, movie reviews, comic reviews, and book reviews. Movie reviews are the most frequent. I call them real snippets. They're, they get released every Monday. And the book and comic reviews, Ronan Reads, they were every last Thursday of the month, but this year I'm putting them on hold because I'm trying to push reviews to actual uh, places, actual uh, uh, published websites. So, but if it's already published on my website, they're less likely to pick it up. Tell us about your new book. My new book, The Fire Truck Who Got Lost, is a children's book that I wrote as a story primarily for my nephew Atticus. Um, after I looked at it and realized, hey, there's something here, I put it through some edits, talked to my friend Amber DeHoya, and she provided some beautiful artwork for it. And after a long year of uh, basically ironing out all the details, making sure everything was just right, we took to Indiegogo to fund the construction of the book and distribution through crowdfunding. And it was a resounding success. I mean, it the goal was $2,000. We made over 6000 And it was just, it was shocking. It was, part of me wanted to celebrate, the other part of me wanted to, curl up in the closet and hide from all the scrutiny and attention that I was under. But all in all, I'm super happy about it. It's a great, it really does wonders for the comp confidence knowing that yes, people do want to read something that you're pitching. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm hoping to, I'm hoping that it goes far. I mean, I, I don't want to, toot my horn but i will say that my friend's artwork is amazing i mm -hmm. i struck gold with that one she captured the adorableness the whimsy uh just completely amazing work and right now we're ironing some things out mm -hmm. uh to make sure that um the artwork actually fits in the book that's something that you got to prepare for in crowdfunding, these little hiccups and bumps around the way. Mm -hmm. Now, as for the book itself, which is what you guys wanted to hear about, I believe, it's about a small fire truck named Barnabas, and he lives in the fire station with these other fire trucks. And he uh, goes to help, uh, well, fight a fire with the other ones. He... Uh, tries to find a fire hydrant to help him, you know, get more water because he has a very small hose. And, well, as you can tell from the title, he gets lost. Mm -hmm. So he's he's looking for the other fire trucks. The fire trucks are looking for him. Uh, 
it's definitely quite the adventure. That is so wonderful, Colin. Thank you for everything you've shared so far. I, I would love to read your book once uh -huh. it's out. I yeah. thank you, thank You're, you. I'd be happy to share it. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. So, um, to go back to your website, could you tell us more about your website and what's on it now? Okay, so as I mentioned before, there are the real snippets, which are reviews of current movies that come out. Mm -hmm. I put them out every Monday, or at least try to. Schedule slips do happen, and mm -hmm. of course, there's the various holiday. Mm -hmm. Originally. When I was first starting out, I was very, uh, I don't want to say picky, but I, I tended to review movies that I wanted to see. Mm -hmm. But then when the concept of getting picked up by outside sources came on my radar, I made a decision of saying, I can't be so picky. I have to show people that I'm willing to re go and see movies that no, A, I wouldn't normally see, and B, I would never want to see. <laughs> so Colin, uh, talk about the book and comic reviews that you do. The book and comic reviews are what I call Ronin Reads, mm -hmm. and they used to come out every final Thursday of the month before I started trying to send some reviews out to other websites. Mm -hmm. And most of them were quite in-depth, though the big one that I truly love is the one of Jim Butcher's new book in his new series, The Cinder Spires, The Aeronauts Windless. And the reason is twofold. One, Jim Butcher is my favorite author, or at least one of them. He wrote, he's just writing my favorite book series, The Dresden Files, so... Being able to talk about him is a huge treat. And two, mm -hmm. this was actually my first step into semi-professional book writing because I got this book, The Aeronauts Windlass, before release. I got a review copy, and this was at Comic-Con. I came to the booth. Um, there was a bit of a talk with the publisher there, mm -hmm. and they gave me a review copy and, you know, I read it, and I was able to come out for review for the book the day of its actual release. I sent that to Jim Butcher's people, and they said, thank you so much. We love this. You are now on the review list for Jim Butcher's future works. Wow. Yeah. Very nice. That's yeah. so great to hear. It is. Well, thank, thank you for sharing that. Um, there's two other questions I'd like to ask is tell okay. us about – the participation in conventions. It's exhausting, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I've seen them. <laughs> yeah. So um, um, one of the big problems with uh, Asperger's, at least in my case, is it tends to err towards introversion. Mm -hmm. And the thing about my work at conventions is I have to be very extroverted. I have to put myself out there. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a challenge. So... First of all, I have to actually buy the ticket to the convention, which is not cheap. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then I have to find different ways to promote Fish and Cherries. And I've got business cards, of course, and mm -hmm. special thanks to Sarah Ross for the graphic design on those. But I also have some things that are a little out of the ordinary, like pens. You know, you probably want some pens if you want to jot down some notes or take down mm -hmm. a contact info. Mm -hmm. And also uh, hand sanitizers because there's a thing called con flu. I don't know if you know about that. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to, uh, you want to keep your hands clean when you're all shaking hands. You right. never know what's going around. So I'm curious, Colin, how long have you attended these conventions and what are the names of some of them? Well, I've been going to conventions since I was in high school. Um, the mo the most common, uh, the one I go to the most is San Diego Comic Con, which is right in my hometown. I also attend Fanime Con in San Jose, um, Babs Con in San Francisco, 
and recently uh silicon valley comic con also in san jose um i try my best to network with a lot of different people particularly those on the more famous side mm -hmm. i've met and uh exchanged words with uh jeff johns the current chief creative officer at dc comics mm -hmm. Uh, Jim Butcher, as mentioned before, I met uh, Lauren Faust, who is huge in animation, and quite a few other people. Another thing I want to make sure I do at cons is basically learn as much as I can about the work I'm trying to go into. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a great panel I went to at San Diego Comic Con hosted by Kelly Sue DeConnick, the current writer of Captain Marvel, and that helped me... Uh, that helped me understand a lot of things about working in the comic medium, which I'm putting to use in uh, another project you might hear about in the future. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. So um, from what you've talked about so far, I mean, it sounds like there's a lot of potential about the things you do that will fall somewhere in the future. But to <laughs> ask you so. any... Oh, I hope so, too. But, but to ask anyways, where do you see taking your creative projects in the future? You mean, like, where do I want them to premiere, or what... Like, where do you see them going? Uh, well, forward, for starters. Right, right. <laughs> um, I... Call me crazy, but I actually think there's a lot of untapped potential in the internet. Mm -hmm. I personally consider the internet to be the newest form of... Uh, well, TV in a way. Right. Like, there's all so much content there, and there's also a lot more creative freedom in some places. So, mm -hmm. with Hollywood, you know, you've got to jump through a lot of hoops, and there's mm -hmm. also some questions about race here and there, among other things. And TV, well, you have to worry about getting juggled in time slots and all this other stuff and right. will this move numbers and all that stuff but on the internet people can see things they never expected that they never knew they wanted yeah. and i would love to be able to to basically capitalize on that potential and mm -hmm. open people's eyes saying hey this is the future. Yes. This is where we're going. Yeah. Yeah, I have to say I've seen things like I learned things 10 times in a year than I did 10 years ago. So I think the future is the Internet is good in that way. Yeah, yeah. Indeed, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Colin and Lynn. And we will be back soon where I, I will give my cultural report. Thank you. Lynn, can you tell us the next steps for the Creative Collective? Um, sure. I think um, we're in the development. We got a lot of great response. We got some great information from people. Um, there are some ideas that people gave us who responded to the survey about how we as a group can best help support them. So I think looking at how to help people network with each other, find each other, um, and uh, get get maybe a membership list together uh, for the Autism Creatives Collective. Um, we want other people to find out about it and to join. And then I think in terms of helping to support them, I think looking at ways to help people get their work promoted and out there. Um, I have a big vision of maybe finding local employers, local foundations, get some grants, to help people get support, um, people in the spectrum get support for promoting their work, for helping to package their work, to helping to sell their work. Uh, I know that uh, Ascend has an upcoming um, convention coming, mm -hmm. uh, conference coming in October, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to be there talking to people. Um, I like people who are interested to let us know, and I think you're going to be putting a contact uh, email address on the screen so that if people hear this and say, I didn't know about this, I want to be a part of it, mm -hmm. please, we want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a really lovely response when we sent the survey out of people who said, I want to help. I want to be part of this. 
And I think that's so important because it's really a question of building something where um, creatives on the spectrum, it's for them, it's theirs. They're gonna help direct it. And I'm one of the many people who will just be an assistant and helping promote this. Um, I do want to uh, mention that this whole idea really came from um, Colin's father, mm -hmm. Donald Cohen, and he did a lot of background work meeting with employers and meeting people in the film industry mm -hmm. and things and, and finding out whether or not there's actual opportunities, whether there's programs for being, bringing people into these industries, and there really isn't. Yeah. So. Uh, I think we have something wonderful to offer, and I think working with the Absolutely. business community and working with the um, foundation community mm -hmm. to help promote this would be, I think it's a great opportunity. Absolutely. And I'd have to say, you know, even though someone like on the spectrum or, you know, lives in the city that's in, that where everything's just about everything's in hand's reach, I think s someone like you guys, you know, is easier to like open up to, um, mm -hmm. because I, I probably some before then you know felt they had to do all this themselves, but but no, but then no, that's not the case. Or, like or so, I mean, sometimes sometimes it just takes a lot of I don't know self searching and, and like thinking, and maybe not a whole lot for everybody, but um, uh, it, I think it's it's great they can fall into s someone's hands like you, you know. Well, and I think and the work Colin, that Colin did on Donald, his, yeah. on his, uh, you know, crowdfunding campaign, yes. I, it was stunning. It was really stunning to yeah. see people s hear the story of the book and hear his story and say, "I want to help." And yeah. I think that energy yes. and that support is out there. Yes, we just have to connect the people, connect the people yeah. with that source. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. It's, yeah, it, it's great that you know anybody should deserve a chance. Mm -hmm. in that way too over, over a project that is absolutely like incredible and it's just a matter of you know getting word out there and having someone interested so th thank you hello Ma today i'd like to bring up the first um cultural report is on saturday june 11th at the Arc of San Francisco is the job club meeting, the next job club meeting, starting at 10 a.m. where Portia Bunton will be speaking and the topic is to be announced at the job club meeting. So again, June 11th, Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Arc. Saturday, June 11th is a free screening of The Family Next Door starting at 1.30 p.m. at Niles Discovery Church in Fremont and the address to that is 36600 Niles Boulevard Fremont and the zip code is 94536 for en so for anyone interested this free screening is about a story of the Lund family and their journey into a hyper complex and emotionally draining maze that is autism and there will be a family with four kids two of whom are on the spectrum which will be followed by a screening part of the second documentary series co-sponsored by Niles Discovery Church and the San Jose Peace Justice Center so June 11th Saturday a free screening of the family next door about the Lund family L-U-N-D Tuesday, June 14th, join the San Francisco Giants as they celebrate and partner with national and local organizations to raise awareness and funds for ASD nonprofits, aka Autism Awareness Night, with the San Francisco Giants at 7.15 p.m. at AT&T Park. For more information, you can go to the San Francisco Giants MLB.com website. So again, San Francisco Giants mlb.com Saturday June 18th is a general meeting held at the ARC starting at 10 until noon Jennifer L. Stinberg Stainberg of the Dale Law Firm will speak about special needs trust and how they are designed for beneficiaries to um, who are disabled either physically or mentally 
and they're able to enjoy property that is held in the trust for his or her benefit, while at the same time allowing the beneficiary to receive essential needs-based government spectrum. So that is June 18th, Saturday, uh, special needs trust. And that is all I have today. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Lynn and Colin, for talking on the show with us, and we hope to hear from you in the, in the near future. Likewise. Great. So to conclude um, this week on the life, life on the Autism Spectrum, I'm Stacy Kennedy. And I'm Will Burnick. I'm Colin Eldred-Cohen. And I'm Lynn Eldred. And thank you, and see you next time. Thank you.